road is road's tough, you know. So people are like, man, this is so much better. I could just do a, a show from my couch. I don't blame you for thinking that. Yeah, <laughs> I, I mean, it right. It kind of like some somewhat makes sense to some extent. Yeah, yeah. I think it's also if we're gonna be really honest. It's hard to be content anywhere you are. So before all the COVID stuff, we'd had we have a new song on our record about like, oh man, the road's hard, and now it's like. Oh, it's hard because we can't go back on the road. (laughs) (laughs) Let's be honest. Welcome to the Lone Star Play Podcast. I'm your host, Patrick Scott Armstrong. Join me and a famous guest. We discuss their career, life, food, Texas, and everything in between. Let's get started. The Lone Star Play Podcast is produced by TexasRealFood.com. Find out more at the end of this episode. Hi, guys, and welcome to another episode of the Lone Star Play podcast. I'm your host, Patrick Scott Armstrong. We have actually a very special episode today. Okay, I I realize I kind of always say that, uh, but really, I mean at this time. um, I've been dying to have this band on uh, back again. We had them on before, Blue Water Highway. I was really excited uh, the first time we had them on, and then, yeah, was very excited this last time we had them on. had such a blast. We, because we have an event coming up uh, October 28th at Hyenas in Dallas for the service industry, it's a service industry trivia night. Uh, we'll be doing more online on our social media about that so you can find out more about that going to the event. It's free, okay, to go and you can win stuff. I mean, come on, and you're going to laugh, okay, Let, let's be real. Um, and we're filming it and putting it up as a podcast episode. Anyway, because of that, we did some trivia. So I'm going to start doing that with all the guests. Um, 21 questions at the end of the podcast, a uh, little food trivia. So we did that today, and they were the first ones to rack up a uh, score. So stay tuned for that at the end to find out what their score was. Um, and then as we progress, we'll see who's doing good and who, you know, how everyone stacks up against each other. Um, Blue Water Highway has a. Um, an album out right now, it's called Paper Airplanes. Uh, you can go to their website, bluewaterhighwayband.com. We'll put a link in the description as well. Um, and follow them online, guys. Their music is unbelievable. And they have this cool new um, podcast that we talked about. Um, so that was great. It's called uh, Beyond the Songs, where they basically, you know what? I'll let them uh, explain what, what that's about. It's, kind of, it's got a nice little twist on, on playing covers and whatnot and explaining uh, behind you know their music. So anyway, it's a great interview. Really enjoyed it. Y'all are going to enjoy it. Uh, We have all four members of the band, Zach, Catherine, Greg, and Kyle. Um, And again, Blue Water Highway. It's awesome. So real quick, before we get to that, here's a quick word from our sponsor, Texas Real Food. Hi, I wanted to talk to you about what's on the Texas Real Food site that's more than just putting in your zip code and finding, you know, the coolest butcher, farmer's market, restaurant around you. There's also other resources on the site, recipes, articles, and one in particular is called the Texas Mom Blog. It's awesome. Faria Khan is writing these beautiful articles. You can really learn a lot about Texas, just giving you a lot of other things to think about, food, family, everything behind that goes into food as well. So just different topics and uh, conversations. Definitely something worth checking out as well. All right, back to the show. All right, guys, we're about to get to that interview really quickly here. Before we do, I just have to tell you about our social media. Very quickly, please, if you're not following us already, do it. Do it. Do it. Do it. Do it. Dodgeball reference. Hashtag dodgeball. Okay. Um. Yeah, Lone Star Play TX. Find us on Instagram and uh, Facebook. And of course, as always on YouTube, please hit that like and subscribe button. And if you're not um, already subscribe, subscribe. Wait, I think I just said that. Anyway. <laughs> uh, so, okay. And, and again, as always, thank you so much for supporting and watching and, and liking the show. Really appreciate it. We have a lot of cool stuff coming up. And again, don't forget about that event. Um, it's in Dallas, Texas, October 28th, 8 p.m., uh, it's free to get in. It's at Hyenas Comedy Club in Dallas off of Mockingbird. Um, go to our, our social media. You'll start to see us start posting about it and whatnot. We're going to have a lot of cool sponsors. You know, we're giving out stuff. 
cash, gift cards, prizes. I mean, honestly, it's going to be a fun night. And basically, real quick, I'll, I'll tell you, we're, we're, it's trivia night, but we're, there's a sign-up list, right? When you get there, you can sign up. And um, we'll, we're going to randomly pick people to come up on stage and compete head-to-head -head in sort of like a tournament, right? So winner moves on and that sort of thing. Um, and yeah, really excited about it. So, and we're going to be tasting some food, you know, some of the products and stuff we're giving away. So we should have a good time. It, it is going to be a good time. Anyway, let's get to the interview, right? Blue Water Highway. Enjoy y'all. How we doing guys? Good to doing see you again. Good. Doing great. Y'all too. Uh, love this. I love that y'all, y'all are all together here. This is perfect. <laughs> we're all together. Can you hear us well? Yeah, I hear you guys per perfectly. Right. Check one, two. Somebody. Check one, two. That's right. Absolutely. Um, <laughs> awesome. Look at this. This is great. I have a surprise for you guys here uh, near the end of the podcast. So this is good. You guys are all together. Oh, oh yeah. Perfect. Nice. Surprise? Man. Yes. You got yes, some cereal surprise. there? What you got? You got some, some cereal? Cere <laughs> <laughs> some cereal. <laughs> Yeah, you know what? <laughs> Last night I had cereal in a coffee cup, and I thought, why is there not a place open that serves cereal in a coffee cup? I can't believe you said that. Yeah. Yes. You know what? I have friends. Our new business venture. Who, yeah, who has a brilliant idea that he's never going to do. So somebody needs to do this. <laughs> he needs to open a gourmet cereal company in Austin, like that. Dude, we you can get brilliant. gourmet cereal out of a coffee cup. What is the brilliant. current I like gourmet it. cereal item now? Like, what is the most gourmet cereal? Is That's it like the that? podcast having started? You're just using all no, the good material. I'm asking. No, no, I like this. I like that. I, I don't know of a gourmet cereal. I, to be honest, so, to be frank with you, I don't know what I would consider. I a, always a, thought a gourmet, brand cereal. Brand gourmet cereal. I don't. No, no, I feel like it's like that uh, muesli, that, no. muesli one or something. Yeah, or it's muesli, muesli. Some sort of like yeah. something yeah. a granola. Something Whole Foods. Something that's not a cereal anybody actually wants to eat. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. Right. So, so Something like that. So Yeah, that's a good question. You know what? I've never thought about that. What is a gourmet cereal? I don't know, I guess. Well, granola. So I, I need to I be don't know. invented. These are things that Socrates you know, was plagued yeah, by. Abso yeah, absolutely. This is, uh, this is definitely a, a world problem here. Um, well, I mean, let's be real. Like, what are the best, the best cereals are an indulgence for me? So when I have a cereal, I want to go back to my childhood. So I'm uh, not trying to yeah. eat some, yeah. like, crazy, whatever, organic cereal. I mean, like, give me, give me the golden grams. Okay. Oh yeah, golden Get, you know what I'm saying? Give me whatever. I don't even care what. To be honest with you, I'm not even. I'm not even that picky when it comes to cereal. Anyway, totally, totally. Okay, guys, listen. Thank you so much. I love the way we jumped into this. By the way, this is the Lone Star Play uh, style perfectly. <laughs> <laughs> um, but before we get started, let's let's have everybody introduce themselves for everyone listening and watching. That way, everybody knows. I'm Greg. I'm Greg Essington over here. Zach Kibido. Catherine Clark. Kyle James Smith. Bam. Greg, Greg is our uh, multi instrumentalist, lead guitar player, accordion player. I sing and uh, mostly on guitar. I sing and play keyboard. And uh, bass and drums. I Figure like it. it. And more Blue Water Highway. <laughs> Blue Water High. Bam. Look at that. Smooth. I like that. So what what have y'all been up to? since The last time I spoke, y'all, there was no tours happening, right? Everything was like shut down. You guys were doing like streams and or at least getting that going and that sort of thing. But now you guys are back out. I see out playing shows out, you know, out back in the world, really. Um, how has that been going? And I've kind of noticed it. Is it sort of going to take a step back a little bit? Yeah, it's, you know, we were wondering how all this was going to go and we were kind of thinking it's not going to be, that didn't even make sense back then for it to just be like, all right, well then we're going to tour again. We, we figured it'd be in yeah. <laughs> and it is in fits and starts. It's like, you know, we went out to uh, St. Paul, Chicago, Nashville. So we've been, you know, we've been out, um, but it's, yeah, it's, it's uncertain. You know, there's things happening and then not happening all over the place. It was so, great to get back out, you know, with, I, I yeah. guess we, you know, going on the long drives and doing it all the time, you can get kind of burnt out on the, all right, here we go again. But after not doing it for a while, it was, it was fun to get back out there on the road and, you know, get some cooler weather and see people we hadn't seen in a while. But yeah, it, it's been weird, you know, because when we booked the shows at first, it was June. So it was like, on a wane and now it's kind of picking back up. So it's kind of like, what do we do? I mean, anybody can get COVID and it ends the show, right? Yeah. Exactly. Oh yeah. 
Isn't that crazy? Like the day before, right? Or the day, morning yeah. of or whatever. We just had a show like that. Our first our first show we were supposed to do, That that's what happened. We couldn't have the show because of someone getting COVID the night before the show, before our yeah. first podcast taping. And mm -hmm. I'm just thinking, we put all this work until we have all this stuff going. Like, oh my God, I thought... This is what bands have been dealing with. Like, well, I can't, I can't handle this stress. I, no, I don't know how y'all deal with it. Some bands I've heard, it's like positive COVID test an hour before, and the doors are held back, and it's like concerts canceled. I mean, it's just crazy. Uh, it's like that. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that's cra right. That's sort of craziness that it can just hang on a, a thread like that. Um, yeah. To be honest with you, um, yeah, that's crazy. Do you, do you think was, some people? I was thinking about. Oh, oh no, please, please go ahead. What were you going to say? Because I'm oh, going to change just, the subject. <laughs> oh, I was just going to say, but amidst all the uncertainty, I was kind of going to change the subject too. But I was going to say, amidst all the uncertainty, you know, we've just had to buckle down and you know do what we can with the time that we have, which we've actually been able to get a lot more stuff out in the world. We're making a lot of videos, doing a pot. We've kind of started our own podcast. Um, been working on a deluxe edition of our album so we have been taking advantage of Still the time when we're not like time, constantly yeah. touring you know so busy yeah. you've been busy busy, busy, busy yeah. blue water highway yeah uh, sir. yeah i like i mean i like that absolutely of course um you know th that's you know that's definitely you got to do something with the time right so do you mm -hmm. this is what i was gonna well i guess two parts i definitely want to dive into some of the other things y'all have been doing um aside from you know just some of the music like uh the podcast some of these other things but real quick before this sort of it's sort of uh in the same in the same line of the same subject here but sort of changing it do you think there have been some artists or musicians who got like you know used to or sort of liked doing just live streams and not touring and you know making the money that way or you know selling the album or whatever like just doing it and like the idea of like going back out just actually they'd have zero desire to do i mean that's a good question because i think there's good and bad about the road right yeah. and so if the road is you know something that you're like oh we gotta go back out on the road again i bet there's people out there that are like that are very thankful i mean we in some regard were that way during like the stage at shows right it we, gives you like a, a perspective i mean i think we both slept in our own beds for the most we ever have in you know five years last year <laughs> got to see our families right. you know yeah. for all of the chris all of the holidays and you know we haven't so we we got things we haven't been able to get but you know once you get back out there, you do realize you miss it, you know? Per personally, I think I just fully miss the road. Like I, I'd, I'd probably out of everyone in the band, perhaps I could probably just live out on the road all the time. Uh, I, I just love, love to travel, love see all, yeah. the, all the, that the world has to offer. And so I, I really sure. love it. Even the warts and all, you know, that comes with the road, but I get it. The road is, road's tough, you know? So people are like, man, this is so much better. I could just do a, a show from my couch. I don't blame you for thinking that. <laughs> yeah. I, I mean, it right. It kind of like some somewhat makes sense to some extent. Yeah. yeah. I think it's also, if we're going to be really honest, it's hard to be content anywhere you are. So before all the COVID stuff, we'd had, we have a new song on our record about like, oh man, the road's hard. And now it's like, Oh, it's hard because we can't go back on the road. Yeah. <laughs> Let's be honest. Grass is always greener. Man. That's hilarious. That's a, that's the perfect answer. I love that. That's so funny. <laughs> That's so funny. Yeah, I mean, I guess that's true. Well, that's the thing. Like, it happened so long. Like, when when the first, you know, beginning of the pandemic, it was like, well, months. I mean, I guess there were some people saying it's going to last a year or two years or something. But most people didn't really know what was happening. And, you know, you sort of were still used to the old way of doing that, you know, pre-COVID. And then you're like, this is just temporary. This is just temporary. This, And then it just becomes, this is my new normal. And now going back out, pre-covid is actually having to like learn everything new again like you know kind of like having to do it again uh to some extent which i find crazy like that it lasted so long it became almost a routine it's true yeah. it you is know? that has made going back out a more of a novelty than it than it was i mean it, it's fun like okay we get to go on go on another adventure again yeah we're about to go out again to yeah, we're going to Montana in a couple weeks. Colorado. Colorado. So. Yeah. Perfect time weather-wise, for sure. Wide open space. Oh, through. man. Absolutely. Yeah, weather's going to be phenomenal. You're right. That's a that's definitely a good point. Um, uh, okay, so m moving on from uh, 
uh, from this, let's talk a little bit about some of the other things y'all have been doing besides. So you guys have this thing I, I watched on, um, I actually watched it on YouTube, but I know you guys put it other places too, because I've seen it on Facebook, the Beyond the Songs. So let's let's talk into let's dive into that a little bit because I love the concept of this. It's very it's very unique. I couldn't think of anything like that. If you guys want to explain a little bit about what that is and um, yeah, let, let's dive into that a little bit. So we play an original song. We're kind of going through our our current album. So we, I think last time we talked, we hadn't released our record yet. Correct. But that was released in in March, and so that's our that's the big thing we've got going on right now. It's paper, paper airplanes. Album. That's right. Yes. Album. And, uh, and we take each song from the record and then we kind of play, we cover a song that's related to it or, or kind of inspired it. And we, you know, we chat in the it's middle a way for us to, to, you know, introduce like a depth to the song that, you know, rather than people just listening to it, it's like, okay, what's the song about? Or, you know, what is this artist that we really like, even if it's a song that's, you know, just sort of related to it, it gives people also like what do we listen to as a band and what are the songs we like and we yeah. get to talk about stories from the road and all that kind of stuff so and we we prepare you know we prepare kind of what we're going to talk about but at the same time i feel like some of it's been plunging the psychological depths of our, our musical brain <laughs> I, I'm like i come across some really genuine revelations in the middle of our discussions i'm like oh yeah that is where I got that from. <laughs> we did do that. We did yeah. do that. Yeah. <laughs> I love that. Trust me. I know the feeling. Uh, trust me. Um, I think what's what I find most fi fascinating about it is that that added cover bit, right? Of of letting that speak also for what inspired or relates or same feeling or right. I like all that. Um, it's, it's just very unique. Um, uh, uh, yeah, I like just a mix, mix of it all. Is there any idea to expand on it or take it further? Or are you just going to keep doing it s sort of the same way? Cause you've done quite a few of them uh, mm -hmm. up to this point. Soon we'll be through the, the whole record. And so after that, we're going to kind of, uh, just figure out any way we can expand on that concept of, going beyond the song <laughs> yeah and it's you yeah. know what you start doing other other music that's not yours maybe invite a friend of yours that has a song and have them do it but you do it with them yes yeah. Yeah. that's yeah that's definitely one of the ideas we, we've been thrown around a bunch of ideas but we the, the truth is we like like zach talked about there's something authentic about the talking that i think we yeah. like most and so if we really like a song that another artist does or we really are just gonna, just friends of ours we'll, that have music, you know yeah. that'll that'll fit that mode because we're just uh, want to genuinely talk about this and yeah just kind of build a community more with that too so that's one of the ideas we've talked about but yeah i mean we just want to talk about song like on the road we're always listening to music and talking about it so why not just cover a song and share wow. some of the couples, and also so. um i think for people that don't know us you can be more enticed maybe by a cover at first and then it's like, oh, I know that song. I'll listen to it. I'll watch this video. And then you might hear our song and hopefully, you know. Absolutely. Great, great point. That's actually a very good point, to be frank with you. Just just from a marketing yeah. standpoint, even. Uh, yeah, great. absolutely. Uh, it's a way to sort of reel you in and uh, something familiar that you can, you've already attached an emotion to. So now you can sort of laterally start thinking from there about your song right uh and how it connects and whatever and and however you do it i like that it could be different every time yeah. um right uh yeah just very cool i love it i love where it can go it so what what's the podcast then is that's not the podcast is it I, we're calling it a, we pod call it a podcast we kind of call it it. Okay, okay okay yeah i think yeah. we're on on the <laughs> podcast as your or is your is Lone Star played on on a on the podcast? Oh yeah, yeah, for sure, yeah. absolutely. We're, we're on every. That's really, honestly, very easy to do once you okay. figure out all the platforms it's going to go on. Like, I don't do it; I don't publish them and stuff. But I know I have in the past other podcasts I've done it where some of them it it shoots off to multiple platforms, right? So you yeah. just upload it to a couple places and it hits it to everywhere. Yeah. It's really, really sort of uh, very easy. I definitely recommend doing that. Uh, for y'all, for sure. It's, a, uh, you know, about 20 minutes, right? 20, 25 yeah, minutes, yeah. maybe roughly. Mm -hmm. Perfect, yeah. man. Perfect. I, yeah, I would absolutely do it, do it as a put it out as a podcast, too, for sure. So I have to say, whenever we were just getting started um, with the idea, it was like we were going to play an original and play a cover. And I was thinking I was talking to Greg, was talking to guys. I was like, all right, I got these talking points. I'll just get up there and 
talk about, man, I'm already boring myself. And Greg is like, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> so, like, why don't you, why don't you just get us all together? And uh, Kyle will throw a monkey wrench in the operation. Always do. Able, uh, yeah. <laughs> man that was way better <laughs> absolutely oh i love I'm not that saying it's yeah. not boring right that's now funny. but it would have been more boring <laughs> that's funny that's hilarious uh, you know there's a, is there really a right or wrong way who knows it's all subjective like it's a tough thing to i mean i deal with it all the time on the podcast we've done almost I guess we're we're getting near 200 episodes. I think by this season, wow. de- definitely at the near some point this season, we'll we'll hit 200 episodes. You for got sure. a point. You've been getting after. well over 150. Yeah, we've done a lot of episodes, but like it's more like, well, how much do you? I've gone back and forth with how much to prepare for episodes and what to do and how and this and that. And at the end of the day, I think the best for me anyway, the best strategy has just been I do prepare a lot actually, and. I might even come off aloof, but almost purposefully. I've actually prepared a lot. I actually know know a lot of what's going on and, and information and backs. I might hear some. Oh, I never heard that, but I have heard it. Yeah. I do yeah. know about it. You know, like you, you're sort of like actors where you, they prepare so much that they can go anywhere. You can right. do anything. You can improv. You can go. It probably works that way musically. The more you know, the more knowledgeable, the more whatever you're able to jump around, and it and it looks easy. That's it so looks true. like you're not even like you didn't prepare anything, but you actually did right. uh, mm-hmm. pr- prepare. And in a way you did prepare because you knew what you had wasn't going to work. So you did something else, and that was yeah. preparation in and of itself. So you ha- know? I got a question for you. How did you prepare for the uh, tequila slap challenge? <laughs> <laughs> a lot of tequila, a lot of slaps. <laughs> <laughs> because I, I thought that was hilarious. Yeah, no, sure thank you. Have up there. I was not expecting the slap somehow. It was in the title, but it just it caught me off guard. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Yes. Uh I, I don't even I'm not sure even where where that came from, to be honest. But I can't remember. It was a lot of tequila. I remember I was drinking a lot of tequila. That's really how it came funny. about. Yeah, that's funny. Really funny. That's funny. I should do more of those uh challenges. I keep people keep telling me to do more, but I get lazy. That's what happens. Get oh, lazy. That's okay. You know. Give yourself a break. Yeah. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Um, okay, let's. Uh, I do want to talk about this a little bit. Th- this is we're we're gonna switch from music to food a little bit because I know you guys love to talk food. That's what I love yeah. about you guys. It's awesome. So I this this is something that's been you know on the top of my mind for for a while since I saw the story about three D printed wagyu beef that they uh-huh. just that they just made. Now they've been. Th- you know, 3D printing some food and working with this and doing that. And, you know, um, and it's, this is much different from like, uh, impossible meat or right. This is not the same thing. This is, this is lab grown. So it's actually muscle fibers, but not from a, an actual animal. I'm curious what you, what, you know, I'm always, I'm asking everybody, like, what do they, what do people think about this? Like, does that scare people? Does the idea of that sort of scare you guys or make you think, Oh, that's not a future. I you feel know, like I want or I don't know. I've never heard of this for so you gotta give me <laughs> and I'm not joking. To get around to <laughs> I know we were just things. talking about no, you, I have actually never heard about you this. know what a 3D printer is, right? Yeah, I know what a 3D printer so is. So instead of it being like a gooey 3D. a gooey of plastic, it's a gooey of meat stuff that they <laughs> Yeah, yeah. That's it. I, think it's pretty, I mean, I think I, I assume it's gonna be that's gonna happen in the future anyway. So we I think watched so too. I, to me, I'm like if it's yeah. if it tastes just as good. We watch a we watch a lot of uh, do it. a lot of like YouTube uh, cooking shows. I feel like you know back. I guess people still watch Food Network, but I watch YouTube a lot as if it were the Food Network. There's so many great things on there, and there's uh, I forget what what we watch like what the channel was, but this lady made chicken noodles. Literally, like took chicken, shredded it up into like it's just a paste, and then made them become noodles. And it, they just look like noodles. And so it's like, but it's chicken. Is that legal? Is that, is that okay? <laughs> but I mean, if it works, it works. And I see it no difference. Like, so if you could somehow pasteify a meat and then 3D print it, okay, cool. Then the only last step is what if it wasn't actually meat? What if it was something synthetic? 
if it tastes the same, then well, you shouldn't. What's in this? The whole point is that it's actually meat. No, no, I'm saying if it is or isn't. Oh, we talking about two things. We don't which is the wagyu thing. That sounds awesome. Let's well, do it. 3D print me a wagyu house. I'll eat it. But what <laughs> is in it? <laughs> What's in it is wagyu beef. It's actual meat, right? Isn't it? Right. Because you were talking. I about- mean, so yeah, it's it's muscle fibers. Now it's not from a wagyu. It's not from wagyu, right? So it's not from an actual like cow. Oh, it's it, it is it synthetic. Tastes like it? it is synthetic. It's, it's it is synthetic. It supposedly tastes like it. Obviously, I'm sure they'll get the flavor more right and more, you know, whatever uh, uh, to that extent. But it's it's in that style of of meat. Um, yeah, the, the idea is to save animals, right? I guess that's right. their right. their their idea yeah. behind it. But what what you know, there's a whole it you know a worldwide industry around it. Like, how right. would we eliminate that completely? And then there's 3D printer, you know, factories that are, yeah. I, 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 I don't know how this works. I mean, I'm down for all new things, yeah. to be honest with you, as a chef. Like, I'm not very, I'm not like, oh, only old school, you know, the, the original. There's really no original way still around that we eat. So, I, you know, I'm all for it. I was just going to say, I wonder what nutritional value. Yeah. It would that's kind of, that was that's, my question. What know, is, that's a great point. Great point. If it, if it tastes, if it tastes good. Um, and it does have nutritional value and, you know, might be worth it. Let's say it does. Let's say it tastes just like it. Let's say it has the same nutritional value. Let's say it's the same. It's just, it's, it would be just like eating it from a cow. You know, would you see, would you want to see that, you know, them making chicken that way, pork, whatever. We don't have yeah, to. Yeah, we have a problem with yes. that. Yeah. It tastes the same and it wouldn't like give me a third arm or something. I, I, I will say Zach <laughs> would be much more open to it if it was pork because he's a big fan of yeah, pork. Yeah, that's my, if you can make, if you can, I don't <laughs> really, me too. Pork, I don't me really too. care about anything else. If he a pork chop, he'll be happy. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Really yeah exactly. <laughs> Just leave my pork alone. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. I mean, hey, that's, that's, uh, you know, they'll do vegetables that way. They would do a- everything. I, I would assume it, it would get to that point. I mean, I guess for like space travel. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Totally. Print your food right. while you're in space. Yeah. So there's like in the fi- is it the fifth element where she puts like a little like stuff in a little little vial and puts in the microwave looking thing opens on a giant turkey gets pulled out or oh, something. Yeah. Like we're just talking about the fifth or, element or or uh, or Back to the Future too. Yeah, right? Back to the Future. We does the pizza right. It was like a tiny pizza and it went. Oh, Willy Wonka with the yeah, and it was like no time at all on the button. Like, yeah. I mean, why not? It was instant. It was instant. Yeah. We want those things. That's awesome. The way I see it is it should start separate. It should start as its own thing. Don't try to necessarily act too hard like it is the same thing. It is a different well, thing. I see what to- you're saying. Tofu, for example, like big fan of tofu, right? But yeah. I eat it as a thing in itself, not, sure. not as a substitute for yeah. something else. Once you start eating mm-hmm. things as its own, then you can appreciate it on its own. And then because you, when you eat pork, you're not thinking because I'm trying to avoid chicken right? You just eat pork, yeah. right? And if it's chicken, you eat chicken, right? Whatever it is. So I think that's a better approach, but I don't know, maybe people are looking for a substitute and then you can figure that's it out the after that. Actual thing. Yeah. That's the I wonder thing. if vegans would eat the meat, even though it's not from an animal, like, right? I, I think the that's the whole point question. of being a vegan, right? Yeah, it's just because it hurts if animals. It, if it's yeah. derived from, that would be the only thing. It's like if they got the proteins from an animal. I see what you're place, saying. I see what you're saying. I wonder yeah, if that yeah. would be an issue. But yeah. That, and I don't know that, to be frank. I, I, I don't know where the material, quote unquote, comes from yeah. that, that they use to make it. That That's actually a great point. Um, but if it was some third yeah. party option, like it wasn't actually beef, it was just completely yeah. synthetic. Like but, the impossible burger that's out yeah. right now, right? Like sort of like that. Like it's just an option. You can get this thing. I mean, I think it will become some sort of option, but you also need, I don't know. I, I'd have to try it. I mean, I'm I'm totally down for it though. Yeah. I was, uh, I was vegan and gluten free for a while. I don't recommend it. Uh, for for a number of years, yeah, for a number of years, and Catherine was vegetarian yeah. for a number of years. Two years yeah. I think a lot of people, you know, dabble with this, and I think it's good just to get some perspective on food. But one of the biggest issues with both ve- being vegan and gluten free, and this isn't the only thing you judge food by, but it's a big one, is it's really hard to make things taste good. At least sure. largely so. There are some really tasty vegan and gluten free items, but sure. you do find that something's missing always in your baked goods. For example, when you go gluten free, you find that there's just a flavor that can be missing or that texture. comes from the the meat in some way, you know, whether we're talking about a broth or, or, or the actual fat of an animal, you know, and I get it that some people might not want those things 
Uh, but then I, th- I do think the burden then on the meatless folk is to come up with some really awesome recipes then. Like, I don't want to like, all right, I'll just like eat a carrot and then, you know, be happy. <laughs> eat meat. But I've tried uh, over the years with that. I, I remember I made like a, uh, it was like a carrot based hot dog thing once where you like shred up a carrot and then you like combine it with soy sauce and you, and like piece it back there and make a hot dog. And I remember eating it's like, it worked, but it doesn't taste like a hot dog. Like yeah, just, I, mean, I would yeah. rather just eat carrots and soy sauce as a thing rather than try to make yeah, carrots yeah, and soy sauce become 100%. a hot dog. Yes. You yes. Know? I, I'm not down for why you want to call this like chicken fingers, but with a U. You yeah. Know? <laughs> right. It's like it's like, well, just make whatever you're making. Why why are you trying to copy the meat? Right. 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 Like that the whole idea is to copy the meat. Like the point is to get away from the meat. Like right. uh in a way. I yeah, I do find that funny. It's like they're trying to s- just trick you in mm-hmm. a way, like to make you think this is bacon or this right. is chicken or this is whatever. Um yeah, that that's that is funny. Um that <laughs> That is kind of funny. Well, you know, I don't know. Again, I'm all, I'm all for it. Um, you know, most vegetables, all fruit we have, pr- pretty much, actually, everything we eat is is already genetically modified. Yeah, everything yeah. it's already been genetically modified. If you look at like the history of food and fruits and vegetables, especially, you'll see how much they've changed over the course of hundreds of years, sometimes thousands yeah. of you know, and just become. And what we've been doing to them since we landed in America and how we were genetically modifying them back in the 1600s, to be honest with you, and yeah. picking certain seeds and picking certain thing and making them a certain way and, and sort of evolving them, uh, you know, a certain way for us to eat. So like, and same with meat and stuff. Look, I mean, I mean, most of the meat you get, unless you just get it straight up from a farm, you know, it's coming from a factory. Okay, yeah. and that mm-hmm. they're not treated well; those animals, yeah. right? Yeah. And you can find it, the more humane and which it's, that's it. uh, absolutely not? that's that's modified. Let's be real; that's not like you know that, that's definitely modified meat um, we're eating. All preservatives that go into things we eat, you know, all these yeah. things. So yeah. somebody yeah, fussing can... about three D printed food, right? Like, let's yeah, get yeah, with yeah. it here. Uh, all it's the, a weird line to draw. All the yeah. white-tailed deer venison in my fridge outside, those not been modified as far as i know yeah true i was no cyber i was pretty deer. closely connected with that process from yeah. start to finish <laughs> yeah that, no, that, and that's beautiful but there would be no need to 3d print white-tailed deer in the texas hill country at least nope. that would be good <laughs> no, <laughs> no, yeah. you've got plenty you got plenty. other problems yes. if you, if that, there's yeah. any, uh, be like, oh, i don't know yeah i think we're going the wrong direction there the whole genetically modified <laughs> food thing is has been kind of an interesting thing i've thought about because for starters, uh, we when people think genetically modified food, they're the kind of the scene that yeah, they think like some petri dish where like your cucumber is and you're like doing like some sort of like, <laughs> crazy sci-fi thing to it. Yeah. But back in the day, farmers were genetically modifying their foods just over generations of yeah. replanting and keeping and saving seed in various ways. In a way, that's all that was. That was the technology of that time. We've just advanced it to where we're doing this. That doesn't make it right or wrong. It's just it is it's the same thing. Just the technology has gotten better. And it's, it is something to definitely keep in mind because I know like the, was it Monsanto and the whole, uh, uh, like they genetically modified a lot of these crops to have like a resilience to like the poisons that they sprayed for insecticides. Right. So people are really concerned that they're putting the poisons in those things. Those are good concerns, but it's those very, very decisions have solved so much world hunger at the same time. So it's, it's kind of a weird thing because it's, uh, we've increased like rice yields in in the world like some crazy number i forget the exact statistic but like the rice just couldn't be grown in places until we genetically modified it and now we're feeding yeah, a lot 100 percent. and so 100%. i think there's it's important to be cautious just like anything in science but genetically modified foods is what we've always been doing just the technology has it's like a yeah uh, it's a really good thing yeah you know, if you think about it like uh, i remember reading yeah. about something called guilds um, where when you want, and I'm going to mess all this up, but you know, when you have like a <laughs> tomato plant in your garden and then certain bugs are always eating your tomatoes, what do you do? Well, you could spray insecticide, right? But a good organic technique is to plant like certain flowers or other vegetables that specifically have a natural, uh, like, uh, the bugs want to eat, the bugs want to either eat those or they, or they like ward mint, them off. mint leaves or something, yeah. for example, might ward off a different insect that likes to eat. 
Um, and that's how you get these, like they call them guilds, these combinations of like flowers and herbs and vegetables that work together. So the bugs don't get there. Those are great ideas, but I don't know if it's always easy on the mass scale, you know, obviously they, then they, that's how you get to the chickens and the tiny cages and all these different techniques that create better yields. But is that best for, for all the, Everybody all the other else, things? Yeah. Yeah. It's complicated to say the least, but I, I always think it's interesting to keep in mind that farmers have been genetically modifying things all the way back to, to when they started. I mean, that's just what farmers do. They say, yeah, ab- absolutely. Of course. All the fruits, vegetables, they're not in like, they're not from the original places you think they are, right? Like everything yeah. came from somewhere else. All been moved around, traded, uh, you know, it, absolutely. Again, it's just stuff that's been. Was that Zach? You told me like a while like years ago about the things that are surprisingly not from America or not from. It was like tomatoes are not. Oh, you're putting me on the spot. Oh yeah, yeah. All, you know what I'm stuff, talking about. Right? All this, all the famous European dishes that. Uh, like necessarily had to be after 1492 because yeah. they were from America. <laughs> yeah, yeah, like tomatoes yeah. <laughs> were not an Italian thing. Before. Oh yeah, yeah. Chocolate potatoes was no one, right? were not a thing yeah. in Ireland. That that was all that yeah. stuff came from America. Yeah, all that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A lot of stuff. Look, I mean, look it up. It's crazy how many things you just. I mean, and even the of- even the vegetable itself. Like if you were to if we were to have photos of those vegetables from back then, they would not look the same as now. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, right, right. right? They, they just look completely different. Like it's it, it, again, it's we have to how many people are in the world that we have to feed like we're gonna have to use technology there's just no we're not we're not all farmers every day right like that that those days are gone of having to sort of everybody having to do that right so it's just inevitable i mean i i just see no way around it um you know we're gonna have to use technology in some way and 3d printing sounds i don't know i i I guess it I guess once it's been out once it comes out and it's sort of like a regular thing it's been around 100 years it will be just like Remember when they used to eat like real, real animals? Remember oh, that yeah. crazy yeah. shit? Like, yeah, two hundred years from now, they'll be like, "Oh, those terrible meat eaters." Inhumane. Oh, yeah, it will. Be. Don't and you think have, we'll oh, get to that point? point. Well, yeah. it'll be like inhumane to have eaten animals. Absolutely. I th- yeah, I think it will get to that point uh, in society at some point. Um, we'll look back like we're just horrible animals. Yeah, you know ourselves. That, that's kind of crazy. Um, yeah, well, we don't think about when we eat something the whole line train of what it took to get it there. Right. Like, uh, it's, it's kind of crazy. The journey, a piece of meat takes to get on your plate, to be honest with you. Absolutely. Yeah. It's true. Um, okay. Look guys, I think it's, I think it's time we, uh, jump into our surprise here. Cause it's going to take a minute. We're going to do, all right. We're going to do some trivia. Uh Oh Oh, no. Okay. So, (laughs) Oh no. So this is something I'm going to start doing with, uh, probably all our guests to be honest with you um we have an event coming up in uh, the late october um at hyenas here in dallas where we're going to do like um service industry night to to help support the service industry and we're going to do trivia so just to get us going i'm gonna you know constantly be rolling with trivia here just to get in the in the role of things i thought you guys would be perfect for this we're going to do some trivia i gotta trivia nice you guys got this oh it's food trivia Okay. Only food trivia. That's it. I That's guarantee it. nothing. So we'll go. What we'll do is we'll go one person at a time and we'll just accumulate your score. So it's it's twenty one questions, and you know you guys are going to set the standard for every guest after you here. Woo! So you know, tough. let's let's. You got a good team, <laughs> right? Tough spot. Look, you got four of you guys. You guys can do it, but you're all and in, in, individually. You're okay. all an- answering individually, yeah. Or what do y'all think? Do you want to answer collectively? Uh, you're the boss, man. The Whatever boss. you want. What's most yeah. entertaining? Or we can have a buzzer. I, I, I think it, I think individually. Okay. Okay. Let's do it. I like that. I, I, might, I, just, might, I might secretly get Kyle Are to you going to tell us the answers? Yeah. Yeah, of course. Yes, yes. I'm going to tell the audience, everyone, the answer right afterwards. Okay. All righty. Let's and do I'm, I'm going to keep track of the points. I may well. cheat. No promises. <laughs> <laughs> this honor system, y'all. Okay. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to let y'all do it. Okay. All right. Uh, we'll go stage left to right. So how does that work? Is that Greg first? I, I, I Actually, yes. Yes. Okay. All right. All right, Greg. Um, let's do, okay, number one. And, and, you know, we'll be reasonable on the, on the amount of time to, yeah, to yeah, answer yeah. this. Otherwise okay. We'll oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Okay. What is the staple food of almost one third 
of the world population. Boom, got it. I gotta go with rice. Word. Correct. Wow. Talking about it. Yeah. Bam. <laughs> yep. Oh yeah. Yeah, that would have been. I was just talking about it. I know. Y'all, <laughs> y'all actually brought up a few things that are going to be in this trivia just by coincidence. Whoa! Yeah, brought them there up. You go. Oh, so I should have so. listened to Kyle whenever he. Was... <laughs> yep. Should have read the article for you. <laughs> 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 Oh uh, shit, I love it. All right, okay, uh all right, Zach, you're up next here. Okay. What contains more vitamin C, broccoli or orange? It's gotta be a trick question because it's obviously trick question, vitamin C doesn't it's exist. Obviously orange. <laughs> but if you wanted me to answer it that way, you wouldn't have thrown in. So I'm gonna go with broccoli just because trick question. You are correct. It is broccoli. Whoa! I wanted it to be a double trick question yeah, where you yeah, just yeah. randomly put You bro- dummy, of course it's of course it's <laughs> Right. <laughs> yes. That well I should have done that. This is not the SATs, y'all. Yeah. I think jalapenos actually have more vitamin C than oranges as well. Really? Really? That's possible. Jalapenos. With that attitude. <laughs> it says, uh, let's see, my answer said broccoli contains almost twice the amount of vitamin C uh, than an orange. It also contains calcium equivalent to that in a glass of milk. Whoa. Interesting. Huh. Interesting. Okay. That so broccoli. eat your broccoli, people. Eat your broccoli. broccoli. I love broccoli too. Uh, okay. Two, two. Broccoli. You guys are two for two, y'all. We're doing good. Crushing it. Okay. Number three. Catherine, you're up here. Let's see. Uh, number three. Number three. What was the first vegetable ever planted in space? <laughs> planted in space, but not. Okay. I'm going to go with a potato just because of the Martian. That is correct. You are correct. It is potatoes. Great job, y'all. Y'all are crushing it. I'm telling you, y'all are crushing it. from here. (laughs) (laughs) Okay, now it gets hard. No, I'm kidding. Give him a really hard one. Right. I I mean, I thought these were all somewhat not not really. Okay, number four. Um, What is the most expensive spice in the world in terms of weight? Oh, that's uh, I think that's the is it called saffron? It's the reddish looking one, the one that's inside the flower. I think so. Right? Saffron. That is correct. Yeah. Oh, Kyle. Yes. Saffron. It's, like it's zillion. It's like yeah, fifteen dollars for a jar this big. It's expensive. When I lived in Spain, they have really saffron is so cheap. Actually, in Spain, you could get okay. it like in a little oh. bag. Honestly, in a little bag, like it was. Wow. Just fly there, get the bag, bring it back. Really? It, gr- it grows like on the side of the road. Oh, oh wow! That's crazy. But I think the whole thing is that's like the only place it grows, right? So Correct. It's Correct. It's 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 still uh, a, a, a lot of saffron comes from Spain. Yeah. Yeah. yeah it's a popular uh, thing in rice, I think. I don't know what else it's used in, but in Spanish dishes, obviously. You yeah, think a lot, so, yeah, saffron's yeah. a lot in Spanish dishes, right? Uh, saffron. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. For sure. Nope. Uh, saffron. Yes. Yes. Um, okay. Number five here. We're back to the beginning. Um, Greg, you're up. Here we go. Although considered as nuts, these are actually seeds. What is it? Mm. They're considered nuts, but they're actually seeds. Pecans. I don't know. Uh, yeah. It's the first thing I could think of. But that's Incorrect. Your first wrong answer, guys. Rant, that's okay. Rant, rant, rant. Rant, rant, rant. That's okay. Listen. Y'all are still crushing it. <laughs> all right, all right. What is okay. it? You guys know? I thought it was cashews. Uh, no, oh, it's almonds. 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 Oh. Okay, I guess. Mm. okay uh, next question. Here we go. Yeah, yeah. Which country has the lowest meat consumption in the world? India. Very good. Wow. Great I job. Know, yeah. <laughs> great job. Great job. Y'all are, ki- I mean, y'all are killing it. Listen, let's, let's, let's be real. It, it was Amazing. wrong, but great job. <laughs> no, no. It, India's right. India's right. India's right. Well done. Yes, well done, y'all. Okay. Catherine, you're up again. Here we go. Which country consumes the most coffee per person? Oh, man. A lot of countries out there. <laughs> It's a country you know, like it's not yeah, some yeah, weird yeah. country. I'm between. Don't give me. Don't give it away. I'm between not- Brazil, Colombia, and Italy. I'm gonna go. Let's go, Colombia. I I don't think it's no. That. I think it's the United States. Really? That's not no. Those are both wrong. Ooh, interesting. What What's it? the answer? It, 
It is the Netherlands. Wow. Whoa. I wouldn't have guessed that. Wouldn't guessed that. An average person uh, there consumes about 2.5 cups of coffee each day, which doesn't seem like. No. I mean, yeah. I consume like. But I guess if you. But I guess if you do that average per per like yeah. every person that yeah right. yeah yeah. I was trying to think of a. I figured it'd be a place that. Produces yeah, where all the beans. Yeah. 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 Good point. Good point. That's the okay. That's okay. Texas. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> the country of Texas. <laughs> the country of Texas. We some people think it is. Okay. Um. We're. Um, uh, number eight here. Okay. Which fruit resembles sixty percent of human DNA? That's a fascinating question. I do not know the answer. It's something pretty, you know, standard. Just go with the apple. No. <laughs> is, is it a banana? <laughs> I don't it's think anyone is, is more obvious than another. Yeah. It's, it's banana? a banana. Yeah, it I was banana. That's, that's crazy, right? Well, I, mean, I feel like I feel like myself when I eat bananas. <laughs> 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 yeah. At least sixty percent of the time. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Feel right at home eating bananas, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah. You guys I mean, are gonna look at bananas differently now. Yeah, I made mean, banana you. bread last night. Should I feel bad about that? Yeah. <laughs> you get your ancient ancestors. Uh, right. Goodness. There. Okay. All right. No worries here. See, they're getting a little tougher. Banana really? bread is people. <laughs> All right, Greg, we're back to you again. Here we go. Right. Where, where did French fries originate? It's got to be the U.S., but, um, or maybe not. Maybe not. I don't know. Just go with, just go with uh, it. I'm, gonna, I'm just going to go with the U.S. That's not it. Oh. That's not it. That's not it. I would have guessed, honestly, I would have guessed that too. We're just such uh, a fan of them that, you know. I get it. I get it. Um, for you sure. All, was it some, was it some yeah, the, freedom, freedom <laughs> fries from the UK? Uh, it says, although named French fries, it originally originated in Belgium. Oh, uh, Belgium. Oh, yeah. Okay. Well, that's, uh, that. And were they called fries. French fries there? I probably not. Pum, uh, well, probably like frites, frites fried frites, something, frites. potatoes or something. Who knows? But well, I guess the shape and the fry and like what we know of as a French fry. Interesting. Um, huh. Yeah, that is right. Okay, Zach, we're on you here, right? Yep. Huh? Yeah. Okay, guys, we got five, five out of nine. We're on number ten. Here we go. Right. Which food never rots and doesn't require require preservatives to keep fresh? Which food? Yeah, there's only one food in the world that never rots. Honey. It do, it do, that's correct. Honey. That is I correct. love honey. Well, it I just gets really, really crusty, yes. right? I eat honey. Yep. I eat honey every day. Honey is really uh, good for you. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's the only food that doesn't go bad. They found honey in tombs in Egypt and ate it. Whoa. Uh, that's really it, cool. nev it never goes bad. How crazy is that? That's that's actually quite fascinating, to be yeah, honest with you. It really is. It looks really gnarly, though, if it's old enough. If it but doesn't go for sure. Bad, uh, if honey it doesn't is, go uh, we have to store it right. L yeah. Let's be real. You do have to store it right. Um, but if you do that, it, it can theoretically last forever. Honey uh, is that such a cool... Um, wow. We have a friend whose baby was born very, very premature, and it got a cut on the baby's leg. And they use this special manuka honey in the hospital on the baby. Like honey is oh, just wow, such wow. a crazy, it's a wonderful. Love that. Yeah, it really is. I didn't. I, I don't remember yeah. that. Yeah, cool. I would wager that if it doesn't rot, that if you ate that Egyptian honey that's like crazy old, it would taste exactly the same. Yeah. Because yeah. If yeah. It, yeah. It, yeah. The flavor, flavor doesn't. The, 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 yeah. Change. Absolutely. That's exactly correct. The flavor does not change like at, at all. That, that is correct. Um, all right. Moving on here. Okay. Number 11. Good job on that last one, y'all. Here we go. Which cheese is made from the milk of buffalo? Come on. Come on. This is easy. Well, I mean, cheese question. I know. I love uh, well, I know that you can make like mozzarella out of buffalo milk, but that's you knew not, that. How did you? 
I think I've had buffalo. You just ring out their wings. But it's not burrata. <laughs> it's really a, Buffalina? Do they have, do they have, of cheese? That's a restaurant. Um, do, do they have buffalo in Italy, though? <laughs> I don't know. Just Mozzarella? pick one. It's not mozzarella. I know that. It is mozzarella. You got oh, it right. Oh, Whoa. That's really impressive. Well I done. I, I, I think I, that's what I said. I think I've had buffalo mozzarella, but I wasn't sure. Jeez. Well done. Huh. I did well, ba- see, we're all learning. See, Would this is what it's that about. Right. That's right. Um, <laughs> Greg said, do they have buffalo in Italy? <laughs> <laughs> I know. I know. No, no, take that <laughs> Greg. Stupid Greg. Apparently so. Apparently they yeah. do. Apparently they do. <laughs> Okay. Um, <laughs> the American Bison Rome in Italy. Does the American... <laughs> right well, now. they probably they you can make mozzarella from other yeah. milk. Uh, right. They, right. They're just the best milk to make from buffalo milk, or the best cheese to make from buffalo milk is mozzarella. mozzarella. Uh, but mozzarella can be made from different kinds from of, other... of milk. Wow. Yeah, yeah. I make mozzarella. It's easy. Mozzarella is easy. Yeah, one I've of the been meaning to try. To make. Nice. It's super easy. It's one of the easiest, easiest cheeses to, uh, to make for sure. <laughs> um, the rennet or whatever is what you get. Yeah, ba- exactly. It's it's fresh. This is something you eat right away. You know, you yeah. make it, you pretty much just eat it right away. Um, okay. Hey, great job on that one. Yeah. By the way. Ah. My nose. <laughs> okay, guys, we got we got this. I promise I've done this before. All right, make sure I got the points right. I don't want, I don't want to make sure I don't I think we're about okay. to- 50% a little over. A little over. Yeah, yeah. You got seven out of 11. Doing doing good. Doing good. Okay. Number 12. Here we go. Um, although never rationed during the war itself, this food was rationed during the post-war World War II. What is it? Come on, Kyle. Hi. I'm afraid I have no idea. Rationed? Uh, it After was the rationed war? during the po- post-war, exactly. Let's World see. War II. Not during the war itself. But not during the war. For some reason, I want to say coffee. That's not a. That's actually not a crazy answer. That's not right. But it's not a. It's not a. It's not a crazy answer. What, what it, Zach? You know, kind of. <laughs> it's not, it's not, you He's know. our World War II guy. I don't know. I don't know. Bread. Bread. Wow. After, Post World but War not, II, but not during. Huh. Not during the war. Yep. They, they let them eat it during the war. Probably ate a lot of bread. Yeah. yeah. That, was, that was probably like the one thing. And then I guess afterwards they were just like, guys, we got to take a break Watch. from bread. Yeah. yeah. Huh. There we you go. Break. Um. Okay. No worries. Okay. Here we go. All right. We're back to the beginning. Here we go. Here we go. Which was the first food eaten in space? So the first food eaten, not planted, like I asked earlier. The first food eaten in space. Spam. Ooh, that's actually not. That's uh, that's actually a pretty good guess. It's not right either. But it's, it's those little guess. space dots that you get it. Oh yeah, space. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Obviously, <laughs> obviously, it's that. <laughs> obviously, dipping dots. Uh, Better, ice cream. Uh, yeah, dried strawberries. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> This is kind of a funny answer. Applesauce. Applesauce, huh? Huh. Oh, none of that. Yeah. Yeah, applesauce. Hey, I don't know. Um, okay. You think it was like All they right, didn't guys. actually plan it? It was just like no one thought about the food and like, what? Well, just go get some of that Mott's applesauce from the <laughs> <laughs> throw it in their bag before the launch is tomorrow. They'll be fine. <laughs> Uh, yeah, that's a good question. I wonder if they voted on it, like how that decision was made. That is a committee dedicated to it, I'm sure. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, all right. Let's see here. Who's up? I, I'm, I'm lost. Uh, Zach, 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 Zach. Okay. Some people are afraid of cooking. What is this fear called? This is a tough answer. Not going to lie. All right. People, there is a fear of people that they have of cooking. They're afraid of cooking. It, it, it's, uh, it's one of those. You know, one of those words, okay. one of those words. It's going to have a, a phobia at the end of it. <laughs> yeah. 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 That, that's what half. I meant. That, that's what I meant. Yeah. We, got half. we got half the answer. Come on. Reach yeah. back to that <laughs> last, last Do you get half a point? Yeah. Do you get half a point for half of that? No. Yes, no. definitely. Definitely. Do. <laughs> uh, what's Round another down. word for cooking? Uh, cooking. Um, <laughs> okay. Okay. Wait, okay. Wait, wait. Uh, 
How do you say it in Spanish? That's Latin enough, right? Uh, culinary phobia. Yeah. All right, you're on your own, buddy. <laughs> Finally, I don't think anybody. I don't think anybody would ever get this. I, I don't. I don't. I, I, I'm not even sure how to pronounce it. Well, to be the answer is uh oof okay magerio cophobia wow magerio sounds the latin Italian. word is uh magerio which means chef oh. or butcher okay uh, so i actually uh wikipedia it wikipedia it and, and i just made there that a word I like um that. And it's it's quite fascinating, um, to be honest with you. It's not what you sort of typically think. Like it involves a few different things. Like some people are free, like a fear of spreading illness. Like they're afraid to cook the meat not long enough. Contamination, right? So, so yeah. there were yeah, or or contamination when they're prepping it. You know, so they that fear keeps them from cooking. Some people just the cooking process itself, like fear of getting hurt, either burning themselves, cutting. You know, yeah. something along those lines. And some people just have a fear of recipes. The anxiety of having to read a recipe, do everything right, follow it. You know, if they miss a critical step, like that anxiety alone keeps them from mm. uh, cooking. Another one is fear of food food knowledge. You don't know enough, so you're afra afraid of using the ingredients and, and blah, blah, blah. And another one was uh, food intake of how much you might feel about how much you're going to eat or not eat or you cook wow. too much you feel like you have to eat it all or something along those lines um, yeah, so i found that fascinating all five. yeah <laughs> yeah it wasn't just like a simple of oh i'm afraid of the kitchen no this is like a real you know these are deal, i feel like yeah. a, a lot of us have some of those fears um we're just able to overcome them right right, right? Yeah. like uh i mean i have a fear of cutting myself burning myself in the kitchen right but that goes away very quickly once you realize you know, you know what you're doing and blah, blah, blah. And, and, and so really, you realize, you you, well, that too, we realize you're, it's going to happen. Right? Yeah. It's right, all good, right. but it's, it won't be life threatening. Right. Like, hopefully just yeah. don't use a mandolin. That's my oh, yeah. oh, yeah. Oh, right. yeah. Awesome get rid of mandolins. Um, yeah. <laughs> mandolin? Okay. Yeah. It's a, it's yeah. a, like a. I'll it'll slice. It'll, 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 I thought it was like, a, no, just don't use a mandolin. Like, yeah, that's yeah. not a bad idea. An instrument. Not that. <laughs> Different mandolin. It uniformly cuts. Yeah. Uh, okay. They can be used safely. I'm just messing. But they, yeah. they have been known to cause the worst injuries I've seen in kitchens. Uh, yeah. Mandolins. Okay. Next uh, question. I feel like we're learning a lot here, guys, right? This is, yeah. a, this okay. is why I did this. I like this. Yeah, it's, it's good. Patient. Learn a ton. Okay. I feel like that was a really tough. That was a really tough question. So I apologize. Yeah. I apologize. Definitely the hardest Zach. one by far. Sorry, <laughs> Zach. Yeah, yeah, for sure. If anybody would have got that, we would have blown away. To be honest with you, you would you would have instantly got a win for yeah. the whole thing. I got half of it right. <laughs> right. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Catherine, you're up next. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. Which food contains the most calories per gram? Pretty regular. Something a lot of people eat all the time. I'll give you a hint. It's a vegetable. Oh. Interesting. I was totally going to say like a fat, like a cheese or a butter. Um, calories per gram, and it's a vegetable. Potato? But you wouldn't give me no. two potatoes. Answers. Corn? No. But you already said potato. But no, uh, it's avocado. Avocado. Oh. Really? Yeah. Which is a yeah. fat. Yeah. 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 Ta they're super fatty. Fruit? Is it a fruit? It's a fruit. Maybe it could be a fruit. What? I could be wrong. Oh my gosh, I screwed it up. You know what? You know what? I'm gonna give you that point just in case. <laughs> yeah, because I, that could be right. Yeah, I could have mis mis misled you. So you know what? I'm just gonna not. I'm gonna stop giving hints. That's 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 my problem. I, I, I led you the wrong way there. I apologize. My apologies. But okay, at least we know the answer. The food that contains the most calories per gram: an avocado. Okay, uh, Kyle, you're up. Okay, listen, Zach and Catherine are carrying all the points, guys. Oh yeah, y'all need to step it up. Yeah. Okay, I'm just, just being real. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right, here we go. When initially introduced, which drink was marketed as a brain tonic and an intellectual beverage? A brain tonic. Let's go back to the 1800s. Yeah. Whiskey. Final answer. Nah. 
And if no. you're saying I'm wrong, no. <laughs> I'm wrong. <laughs> it's got to be Coca-Cola or Dr. Pepper. Yeah, that's that's actually correct, Catherine. It was Coca-Cola. Ah, yeah. Come on. See, look at this. They are cr- guys. Come on. See, now. it's got to yeah. be now it's got to be whiskey. <laughs> okay. Sorry. You just you just want a glass of whiskey. I just want yeah. yeah. That's what's happening. Okay. Listen, Greg, you're up, bro. Pressure's on. Let's do this. Let's do this. <laughs> Let's do Pressure it. is on. You got Oh my god, you got this. You got this next one. Uh-oh. Okay. Which state of the U.S. drinks the most alcohol? Which state of the U.S. Yep. drinks the most alcohol? Oh, man. Oh, that is tough. Per capita? Who's got the biggest population? Well, that's what I was going to say. Is it per capita or is it per Yeah, capita? no, it's true. I, I, don't, I don't have those details. Okay. Just the most gut, alcohol. Right? Okay, it's it's the consumes the most alcohol per person. Okay, per person. Hmm. Where's uh, Wade Boggs? Where's he from? <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, he was on a plane. Yeah, so it yeah, yeah, wasn't yeah, in a yeah. state. Do you guys think you know this, or are y'all just? Oh no, I have no idea. Any educated guesses? Um, I'm gonna go with. Wait, we said per capita. Is that what we said? Let, let me ask. Yeah. Per person. Okay. Per person. Let, per let me per- ask you this. Yeah. What city do you think in America they drink the most? It's probably that state. Oh, okay. Then I have a guess. I, I'm going to go Wisconsin. Whoa. Who? Okay. Oh, I see. Where what? Because we drank beer in Wisconsin <laughs> once, I think. <laughs> what? Wait a second. What? <laughs> wait, hold on. I... <laughs> okay, wait, wait, wait. Wisco- Wisconsin? Well, I, I Bro, thought that... of Bourbon Street when he said that, so I thought New Orleans, so I thought Bourbon Louisiana. Street. Oh. Holy uh, Wisconsin! It's got to be, 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 be a northern state. It's got to be New York or um, yeah, Massachusetts. I was thinking New York or Massachusetts. Too. Wisconsin. I can't get over that answer. Wisconsin. <laughs> no. Well, no, my, no. my 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 so, thought my thought was Milwaukee. We went to the breweries there, and that's yeah, like this is where you messed up, Greg. Yeah, I know. Beer is lower alcohol by volume. Uh, <laughs> wait, <laughs> yeah, but that means you drink more of it. If it's lower alcohol, no. you can't okay, drink. Give us the answer. Don't make this more we, complicated. Before we listen, go. y'all, y'all are gonna kill yourself. It's Nevada. Oh, because oh, of Vegas. Of a nut crisp. See if it, we've never been to Vegas. I feel like if Vegas, Vegas, Reno. I've never been to Vegas. Mm. You know, but okay. Lot, either way, like New York City, the, you know, New Orleans, Miami, L.A., yeah. like that. It, but he's like Milwaukee, fucking <laughs> Wisconsin. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> That's pretty. That's funny. the answer of the night. That's the answer of the of the episode right there. Well, Wisconsin. <laughs> Wisconsin. I love it. That was great. <laughs> I love it. That was great. Sorry, you had a reason. You did have a reason for that I answer. Did have so re- it was I'll, an educated I'll, guess. Yeah, yeah, it was. I'll, I'll, I'll give you that. I'll give you that. It wasn't just a blind guess. Okay. <laughs> All right. Listen, y'all are still gonna have to step it up, guys. Uh, okay, Zach, you, you're you're gonna have to get some more points here for these guys. Here we go. All right, this is um, number 18, I believe here. Pardon me. Okay, here we go. Uh, Who is said to have created the Manhattan cocktail? This is super difficult. Whoa. You're getting getting some tough. Like the name of the dude that did it or or, or woman? Who knows? Yeah. uh, Or did it come from space? Was it Uh, Oppenheimer? Yeah. I tell you what, let's make this easier. What country did it come from? I'll well, make this a lot easier. The country of New York. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm a, yeah, I mean, man, the Manhattan. The United States. It's totally, I don't know. My I don't guess know the is, answer. My guess is it came from London. Yeah? Mm. But I don't know. Uh, I don't know. Well, that's not an answer. Give an I answer. Know. Come on, United he said Wisconsin States. after all. Yeah. <laughs> Came United from States? States? No, no, no. That's not, she was, Catherine was right. It's London. It's from right? England. It's from England. Winston oh. Churchill's, Winston Churchill's mom uh, c- came up with that cocktail. What? Whoa. Okay, that's super cool. Wow. Wow. Um, that's a great, that's a great trivia question. That's a good, like, if you're at the she bar was, and you send someone orders that, nobody's going to know that. Yeah. You know what I mean? She was American, wouldn't she? Winston Churchill's mom? He was part American. Oh. I don't know if she was actually like citizen, but like I do know that he had some American um, 
that was like a thing. Yeah, he did. Huh, huh. Well, there you go. Look it up. We'll look it up. Yeah, you couldn't get that answer right. Yeah, well, I don't know. Listen, right. maybe she was inspired by New York and had them create it there in England, thinking. you know, yeah. as a tribute sort of thing. Yeah. Right. So I'm thinking. I don't know. I mean, I'm spitballing here, but okay. Um, who I think Catherine, you're up next, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. All right. Um, we got eight points, guys, out of nineteen. We got to <laughs> Yeah, way right. harder. Or out of eighteen, excuse me. This is number nineteen. They did get harder. Okay. Not, it's not getting any easier. Here we go. <laughs> According to Greek mythology, <laughs> you already know it's going to be. Right. Who is known as the god of wine? Oh, I know this. Greg. Zach and I know this. Yeah. Uh, god of wine. I don't know many of the gods. Uh, Achilles. Mm -mm. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Hey. Not a god. Not He's the god of Hero. Is that a god? No, no. He thought he was. Yeah, it's got of tendons. I love that. That was funny. Uh, what is right. Who, Bacchus, Bacchus. Right? That's Bacchus. correct. Yeah. That's correct. That is correct. That is correct. See if wow. you could have got that one right. Yeah. Damn. I mean, if only Damn. Wisconsin. <laughs> really cooking yourself over there on that one. <laughs> oh man, can't get over that. Okay, here we go. <laughs> All right, you can redeem yourself right here, Kyle. Uh oh. Which alcoholic beverage is considered to be the oldest in the world? It has to be. It has to be either beer or wine. It's only about beer. No, really? Wine. It's wine. It's mead. Mead. Oh, back to the honey. Oh, there man. we are. Back, oh, back to the honey. Mead. That's right. That's right. Back to the honey. Wow. Tied it all mead. together. I do like mead. It is believed to have been drunk in India some 4,000 years ago. Wow. That's awesome. Yeah, that's cool. I've never been drunk in India. <laughs> <laughs> Can you imagine the first drink of mead? And to be just like no, normal reality, and then yeah. like all of a sudden, like whoa, oh, what's what happening? This? What's happening in the cave, y'all? I see two caves. Okay, <laughs> I got a food question for you. <laughs> I can see how somebody would have stumbled across wine, maybe mm. beer. Yeah. Oh, this went bad. Yeah. Oh, it tastes good. good. Yeah. Oh, this went bad, honey. We just went over this. Yeah. It doesn't go bad. Oh yeah. Well, there's some combo, right? You put so they it's honey and water, it, right? Yeah. yeah. Put it in uh, a fruit okay. juice or something. Mm. I know, yeah. I know with fermenting processes, there's like a, sometimes it helps to have like a sweet component in there yeah. for the yeast to eat the sugar uh -huh. and then creates alcohol. Right. All right. Great. Honey, honey's good. You're the last question. One of the last good. Good. Yep. Good. You get the last question. Uh, okay. Can we answer for all the marbles. <laughs> for all the marbles. Yeah, Greg's got this. He's you got this. Oh, dude, you have this. You have oh. this. I promise That's what you, you said about the last one. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's go, Wisconsin. You got this. Go. Here we go. Second to water, what is the most popular drink in the world? Tea. Correct. Woo! Greg! Wow. Woo! Nice. Yeah. Nice. I, nice. That's what I like, guys. Ending on a beautiful. Finish strong. Yeah, finishing uh -huh. strong. And actually, Greg, by getting that point, you Kyle finished last with one point for for the whole team. Classic. Oh. You ended up beating him with two right there. All right. Yeah. Nice guys nice. finished so, last. Zach and Catherine each got three points, so we Woo! got a total of nine points out of twenty-one. Wow. Wow. Jump. Not bad, y'all. This is the inaugural trivia. Y'all had no idea. Y'all no, weren't prepared. We, we weren't. Okay. I don't yeah. know how we would have been. On a, can you like start a tally of all your podcasts? So <laughs> yes, a, absolutely. Of course. Uh, that's a great idea. That's what we'll do. We'll, we'll start I, a little. I can, say, I can honestly say if, if we would have studied, it would have made no difference. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> more... Yeah, that's true. What do you study, right? Yeah. Yeah. What, what... yeah. yeah. There's really no way to study. It, it, oh. it, really. Uh, I don't know what what website you hit right like what do, what do you start googling no. food history 
Uh, yeah, boob. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, well, great. Hey, I say great job, guys. That, that's all. Thank I you. Guess. Thank you. That was fun. Uh, okay. What? Uh, one thing also here before we go. Well, a few, a few things here. A couple things. Um, I want y'all to each shout out your favorite food places in Texas to go eat at. It doesn't. It can be anywhere in Texas. Just you know, places you guys like to go eat. Let's give them some love. So we'll just go one at a time, whatever order y'all want to go in. doesn't matter. Whoever uh, you want Milt, to give some love to. Milt's Barbecue in, in Kyle, Texas. Okay. It was great ribs. Some of the best ribs I've ever had anywhere. Wow. I like it. Yeah. Uh, Lowly's. It's. Uh, oh, Breakfast Tacos. Breakfast Tacos in San Marcos. Yeah. yeah. All right. Nice. I'm going to go nice. with a couple. Uh I love, we recently went to uh, Uchiko and Emmer and Rye in Austin uh, and also Uchi. I mean, those are all very fancy restaurants. So good. But also the creamy green salsa at Borrego de Oro on South First Street. So oh, it's good. great. The sign is, it you totally used to be a Chinese it's a place. It's Austin Mexican restaurant hole in the wall. wall that, but the sign has like, you know, the old like Chinese building aesthetic, but it's just it's a Mexican restaurant. Yeah. The greatest. I, I, I know exactly where that is. Oh, yeah. Awesome. I've, I've yeah. always thought that was hilarious. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But oh, it's if cool. you want a great experience of eating food, Emmer and Rye or Uchi or Uchiko. Oh, so good. I agree. Emmer take and Rye yeah. So take all the restaurants. I would say all the Tatsuya places. There's three of them that come to mind in Austin. There's, uh, Ramen Tatsuya, obviously a ramen joint. And then there's Dip 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 Tatsuya and then Kamori Tatsuya. And all three of them are incredible. And the ramen Tatsuya is probably my favorite because I'm a sucker for ramen. But uh, the Dip 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 Tatsuya is also such a great experience. Uh, they have like a whole, it's like a melting pot setup where you're cooking your food kind of there, but it's just like a couple of swishes in like a broth. Oh, some of the best flavors. So good. So good. Hell yeah. That's okay, what about you? That's what I'm talking. Oh gosh, I don't know, guys. I don't put me on the spot. Oh my god, I don't. I don't know. <laughs> I, 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 got a food I, podcast. I, 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 yeah. I just want like he cannot be picking one. How about in yeah. Austin? Yeah. That we I, didn't mention. You know, that's a good. Uh, I'll tell you my favorite taco spot in Austin. Um, okay. It's not on social media or anything, so you really have to like drive there and find it. Um, it, it they only take cash. It's called, it, it does have a name. It's called Super Taco. It's off of Old Torf, East, um, East Old Torf. So east of 35 <laughs> on Old Torf, heading down before you get to Pleasant Valley. Okay. Yeah, uh, I think you're talking about. There's a, um, an old car wash on the right-hand side. So before you get to Triple Eight, have you ever been there? That Triple Eight Asian place that's off of Old Torf? Yeah. Anyway, it's before that. It's on the right. It's it just basically go down Old Torf, you know, take 35. Go east on Old Torf. On the right, you will see uh, an old car wash with a food trailer in it. They have the best tacos in, in Austin, right. in my opinion. Cool. It just remind Super me tacos. of solid honorable mention that's been basically just like you described. It was like a food trailer, and they're just now getting a brick and mortar yeah. in Buda is Valentina's. Highly, highly, highly recommend Valentina. So yes, good. Yes, uh, 100%. Uh, <laughs> without question, Valentina's is one of the best places in Austin. Absolutely. To be to be honest. Yes. Yes. Yeah. I and they're moving closer to us, which is awesome. Yeah. Yes. Uh, U Uchi and Uchiko um, are both phenomenal places as well. We're actually having the new, they just appointed a new chef in Dallas for the Uchi and Uchiko here. And we're having that chef on the podcast here soon. Nice. Uh, nice. I'm actually going to Uchi to sit down and eat and we're, I'm going to do the podcast at the restaurant. That's so, so that'll cool. be cool. Yeah. I yeah. Always, um, you should ask them. I mean, like I'm always so curious at a restaurant like that where the food is so high quality, how they do that. It's on such a mass scale for everybody in the restaurant. I'm just, it's, it's just prep. I, I worked for high hospitality, which is the company that owns. Uh, Uchi, okay. So I, I yeah. work for them. Um, it, it's just, it's just, you know, it's just a prep. People in the yeah. It's just prep. Um, you know, same way you guys learn a set. Yeah, you know, you you just learn each song. You know, it's like, how do they know this song so well? Because I played it a million times, man. It's right. the same thing with with that. Those places, um, it, it's just a lot of prep, discipline, and you know, a lot of good routine chefs in the kitchen. I'm sure, yeah, absolutely, of course. Yeah. Uh, they they only take the best there. Um, they also follow a very Japanese style at those places, which is just 
you don't have much to do. So the little you have to do has to be fucking perfect. Right. Mm -hmm. It's that simple. And it's really just up to leadership to not take anything less than that. Right. You just create an environment where it's going to happen anywhere because you're more looking at the people next to you prepping their stuff. You're like, I got to beat them. Right. I got to make mine just as good. Right. So it's, and it's all very in the, in a, in a good way too. They, they create a pretty decent environment of lifting each other up and making sure everyone does um, a good job. Those are, those are actually a great place to work too. Cool. Um, not, not aside just from their food. Yeah. Um, yeah. Mm-hmm. You know? Yeah. It's probably some of the best Japanese food in the country, to be honest with you is. Uchi. That's what, yeah. That's yeah. what we've heard. I mean, yeah. It's yeah. Just yeah, yeah. Oh, hundred percent. There's, there's no question. We're having Tyson Cole on. What am I talking about? We're having him on uh, soon oh, cool. as well. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. What am I talking about? Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. That's great. Yeah. For sure. There's a restaurant that we really like. Um, that's the him and the guy who does um, Franklin. Franklin's yeah. that Laurel. Yeah. Wisconsin? Yeah. We, we had Aaron. We had Aaron on in July and we talked about Laurel because they opened one here great. in Dallas. OK. Um, and yes, I, I worked at Laurel actually huh. for like four months or so. Yeah. Many, many a while ago, right when they opened, right when they opened, I was a chef there, a sous chef there at uh, the one there in Austin. Cool. Great awesome. spot, great food. Yeah, one hundred percent. It's too too much. Honestly, it was too much work. It was like we were constantly busy. We were serving crazy amount of people. It was yeah. probably the busiest place in Austin at the time. For could be one of the busiest places. Period. Uh, still, I, I don't know with the oh. pandemic and everything. Obviously, that changed a lot. But anyway, um, okay. Well, hey, great shout outs, guys. Those are all awesome places. Um, I knew you guys would have some awesome places to to shout out. You know what I mean. Um, Let's uh real real quick. Let's tell everyone where they can get y'all your new album, Paper Airplanes. I know it's still, you know, it came out a while ago, but it's still something y'all are promoting, and it's right what's what the current album is. So if you want to just tell people how they can stay connected with you guys, and really whatever you want to tell them about tour coming up, whatever, I'll let you guys uh, take it over from here. Yeah, definitely uh, follow us on social media. We're at Blue Water H W I on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter. Um, and then, uh, yeah, we, you know, listen to our music anywhere music is found online, but, um, we do have CDs on our website for sale. If you Google that and we're going to have vinyl, um, of our album coming in November. So definitely oh, nice. Yeah. Go ahead and, you know, give us a follow or, or sign up for our email list or whatever. And we'll, we'll definitely let everyone know when we get those in coming up in November, but yeah, we're really excited about the, getting the, getting the vinyl. Um, Hell yeah. we've got, um, yeah. We've got some cool stuff coming up in October, November. We're putting out a new single, um, and we're also putting out um, a deluxe edition of our of Paper Airplanes that's got some, I think, two two live recorded tracks. And we're also releasing. We went into the studio and filmed and re-recorded the whole album front to back, kind of the style that you saw. Like I don't know, Taylor Swift did it, Billie Eilish did it, where they kind of release their whole album front to back, where you could watch it. So we're going to release that on uh, a website called Noon Chorus, and a f- couple of the tracks from that are going to be on the deluxe edition with this new single. So, oh wow, oh, it's coming up, cool. coming up next month. Yeah, no, I hadn't heard of that. I hadn't heard of that concept, that idea of playing the whole. I don't know. Yeah, what you're it's about. it's really cool. I mean, it's it's almost like it's kind of a like the live stream thing that everybody was doing last year, but a little more, you know, professionally filmed and edited and all that. So, and so you just play every song one after the other. Yeah. Yeah. And we, but we went into the studio and did it. And, you know, we really like, you know, a little like, different versions of it. It makes like you a couple of times, you know, and like, in the way it's shot, it makes you feel like you're, you're right there on the, on the, in the, on the live room floor in the studio. So yeah, it's a cool, yeah. you know, it's a cool experience. Yeah. So there's no like takes. I mean, it's like, this is it. Well, or I guess, yeah. I guess you go song by song, right? You record it song right. by song. We definitely, so yeah, could be had to reset yeah. certain songs, you know, have right. different yeah. instruments on and whatever. But we're, yeah, we're definitely playing right there exactly yeah. what it's you live, see. Yeah. Exactly yeah. what you see. Exactly. It's not, it's not formed of different takes. Right. Yeah. yeah. The song. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. I see what you're saying. Yeah. That's cool. Wow. That's, dude, that's super cool. That shows like real talent. That's when you get to see people that have, you know, real talent. Like, the, you know, it's legit. Thanks. Uh, yeah. what, what they're what they're doing, you know what I mean? It's uh, you're not hiding behind anything. Uh, doing right. that, that's very raw, open, open kitchen, if you will. Indeed. Yeah. yeah. Good. Yeah. Very good. Yeah. And I, I just yeah. wanted to add that there's a. I, we're definitely in this boat, but a lot of bands are like this. A lot of bands had records coming out just like you know uh, they normally would before this pandemic hit. Where we were ready to release it, what that March or that May, 
before COVID hit and we delayed it and put out some singles and did what we could. But so many bands have, they have albums that came out that no one really knows happened because they couldn't tour. They couldn't do all the usual things. We're no, we're no different. So, so many bands out there have great albums, great music that you don't even realize they put out yet. And so we want to make sure people get a chance to really listen to this record. That's why we are putting out another single that, uh, and with this deluxe edition, so people can listen to that. Cause that's some of the subject matter that was like on the, on the tail end of making that record. But, we we want to make sure everyone gets a chance to listen to this. We can't tour as much as we want to. If we were, a lot more people will be seeing this record. So we want to give it a fair shot. So uh, if anyone's out there hadn't listened to it yet, definitely uh, give Paper Airplanes a listen, please. Absolutely. Of course. Of course. Well, well said, for sure. I'm sure a lot of bands and artists lost some momentum um, that they may have had and had been gearing up for, right? And then... Yeah. Uh, that hits and you, you, you sort of almost feel like you got to start over in some in some ways and, and probably vice versa. It, it might have helped some people that yeah. weren't, you know, in some weird way uh, yeah. before before, you know, you know, wow, that, that's a, that is fascinating, though, to uh, think about. So and we'll put all the links uh, for everything, too, in the description, guys, so people can oh, awesome. check it out that way. And uh, I'll mention it, of course, in the in the uh, in the intro as well. And uh, get people behind it of course uh, listen guys this was so awesome i love talking to you guys i mean that so much Let, let's not go so long next time yeah in yeah. between Definitely. having you guys on again um one you guys are going to have to come back and beat this trivia number it's always fun it's always fun um thanks for having yeah us. we really appreciate yeah. it yeah indeed. no man absolutely this is uh this is so awesome i'm super excited to uh have you guys on and now that you guys are out playing and you know people are going to shows i definitely i'm going to try to come to uh come to a show and figure out uh, oh, yeah, how man. i can make that happen i'm in dallas now so i'll probably have to look for a dallas fort worth show something like that sure. uh somewhere mm -hmm. in there uh but cool. you know either way so thank you guys so much uh appreciate everything um you know y'all are doing for the music industry and just keep going doing your thing um you know wish you guys all the best and um yeah just good luck with the tours and everything coming up i know that stuff's just very whatever so i just you know wish the best with that um for for sure thank you so awesome cool. thank you very all much all right Thanks, see man. you next time and now it's time for my favorite part of the show the end credits this is everyone responsible for making the show happen executive producer sebastian sauerborn podcast manager nevena ponovich marketing manager caroline grape Video and audio editors, Danilo Vojnov and Pavel Sebastianovich. Thumbnail designer, Marko Vukovic. Social media manager, Ursa Rusman. Guest outreach, Corey Menciez. Designing image quotes, Jay Apuya. Social media videos, Labri Fernandez. Outreach support, Yonet Del Mundo. Thank you so much for listening. We'll see you next time. The Lone Star Play podcast is produced by Texas Real Food. Go to texasrealfood.com and you can search your city for stores, butchers, restaurants, farmers markets, and more who are using fresh, artisanal, organic sources. It's a fun site that brings all natural options all together. I hope you enjoyed this episode. For more information, go to thelonestarplay.com. I'm your host, Patrick Scott Armstrong. Until next time, 